Uh, good morning, uh, Andy and uh, Peter. It's nice to see you uh, again. Um, Andy, I've just got a couple of quick-fire questions for you first. The first is, um, is, <coughs> is the RDG going to be abolished uh, as part of uh, Great British Railways plan? Uh, so, yes, I mean, we, we said uh, in our own submission to, to Keith's review that parts of Rail Delivery Group, uh, the, the parts where we perform sort of support functions across the industry, uh, are probably better placed in an arm's length body, and so okay. the intention will be that I'm they... I'm sorry to they interrupt move. you, Andy, from a long answer, because I'm getting... I'm getting no, no, the, just... The, the, yes, the so here. some so, parts will go to so, so basically, rail, other parts and, and when, when will that happen? So, obviously, now the white paper is published. Uh, yeah. We're working at pace with the department, and okay. we indeed with Network Rail, to look at what the pathway is uh, for that transition for RDG as part of wider industry reforms. OK, and very briefly from you, Andy... Um, the train operators which you represent, um, do they have any key concerns with what is being proposed by the government? And if so, could you very briefly say maybe what the top two or three concerns are uh, on behalf of the private sector operators? Well, look, to get the uh, best out of the private sector in, uh, in a system like this, uh, the uh, operators who are closest to the passenger, you know, they run the trains that the, 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 the passenger actually gets on. They need to have the flexibility to deliver for, for those passengers. Yeah. So we've already talked about the so, need to get the, Andy, I'm sorry the to, I'm sorry to, right. Andy, I'm sorry to interrupt you um, because it, we're short on time. Are there just two top two concerns that the private sector has with, uh, with, with, what, with this proposal? Are there other two that spring to mind? If not, we can, we can crack on. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. So, so the culture of, uh, of Great British Railways, getting that right, that's one. And then for a second, ensuring that the, the contractual model, so the relationship between operators and Great British Railways, has the right incentives and flexibilities in it to allow operators to deliver for the customer. And um, be good to sort of drill into that, but I'm conscious you that, wanted a that, short that's answer. That's absolutely fine. Thank you very much. Um, so, Peter, I just had a quick question for you um, uh, relating to some of the things you mentioned just now about CP5. Um, there are a lot of really important schemes in CP5, which you'll review either deferred or, or sort of uh, parked in the siding, shall we say. One of them, of course, was the Heart of Wessex Line resignalling, uh, which uh, a lot of work had been done on that. Um, what, what will happen to those schemes in the Great British Railways world? Will they come back on the table? Will they be done, or have they vanished? Uh, well, uh, I, I think the simple answer, if, it, if it's renewal uh, uh, of, of existing railway assets, sooner or later it will have to be done. Uh, and uh, I think that the, I think the question is for uh, the new in the new structure to assemble all of the investment propositions uh, uh, about renewal and, and enhancement, better services and more services, um, and to uh, and to look at them in a in a in a holistic fashion. Uh, I mean, I I'm I'm I, I don't think the railway has done terribly well in the last ten or fifteen years with projects that have been half started half funded, some of them have been started with no funding, uh, others have turned up suddenly. Mm. Uh, and I think we can do a lot better in the future by having a long-term plan, I... by understanding what the best train service pattern is for the mm. uh, demand for passengers and indeed what freight, what, what freight movements are needed in the future and then derive the investment plan from that. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I'm, I was used to TFL to a plan that changed over time but was fundamentally structured on the basis of the renewals you needed for the existing system and the demand on the system to serve, to, to, to serve the people and the, uh, and, the, and, the, and the politicians in, in charge. And that's yeah. what the, that's what the, the so, new so organisation... Do you think the Heart of Wessex Line resignalling will be with us soon at the beginning of the GBR uh, world? Is that likely? I, I, I'm, I'm not sure, Chris, I could tell you, but I, I'm sure it will happen soon. I should later, be delighted if you might have a look at it, Sir Peter, and maybe let me know at a later point. I, I think uh, Victorian signal boxes are probably anachronisms in the 21st century, but um, well, anyway, uh, uh, but I'll, we need to put, put, put the money where, where, where it works the best for the public and the government. Works, works best for West Dorset constituents. But on that point, I should hand back to the Chairman. Thank you, Sir Peter.